Welcome to the B100S Technical Webinar. I am Ross Everloon, the Product Manager of Blue Sound Professional, and I will be reviewing the many technical features of the B100S and its applications. The goal of this presentation is to improve your understanding of this network music player so that you may have successful application design and installation experiences with the B100S. To help maximize the understanding of this product, we recommend that you first complete the review of the Blue Os Pro 101 technical webinar so that network settings, Blue Sound controller apps, and how to place support requests are fully understood. Now let's introduce you to the B100S. The Blue Sound Professional B100S is a one-third rack-space network music player designed specifically for use in commercial installations. This player is based on the established Blue OS platform and is capable of playing and distributing content from local network storage as well as from a large number of streaming services, including some specifically designed for commercial use, such as Sound Machine, Custom Channels, QSIC, Sirius XM Music for Business and Tunify. The B100S features include stereo network music replay capabilities, integration with local network content storage is available via libraries on NAS drives, for example, integration with many streaming services, integration with a wide variety of internet radio platforms, PC, Mac, iOS, Android app control, Third-party control systems such as Crestron, Control4, QSIS, Elaine can be used. Security preventing unauthorized control using a credential-based authorization. Support of high-res audio up to 192 kHz 24-bit. Support of MQA content. And has a one-third rack space form factor for commercial installations. The optional rack, the RM100 mounting hardware, allows for the mounting of up to three B100S units in one rack space. This slide provides information on the specifications of the B100S. I won't speak to all the specifications shown here other than to highlight that the player is a musical source providing analog or digital output consuming little power and uses a robust Ethernet-only connection, no Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or AirPlay 2, which prevents unauthorized control and operates via the BlueOS operating system. On the front of the B100S, there is a status LED indicator that can provide some important information. For example, once fully booted, the B100S, when connected successfully to a LAN, will show a solid blue light. This does not mean it has successfully connected to the internet. That is dependent on checking via the Blue Sound Controller app that services are fully available as discussed in the Blue OS 101 webinar. Other status lights to note, if the player is displaying a solid red light, it may be stuck in upgrade mode and may be worthwhile executing a factory reset covered in this presentation. Or if that does not solve the issue, please place a support request. When an upgrade is underway, you will see alternating flashing red-green lights. The player will not play music at this time and must be resumed by user after upgrade is completed. The other status indicator modes are rarely seen, though flashing blue will happen if mute is selected. Now it's time to explore the rear panel of the B100S to help understand the inputs and outputs of this player. The B100S communicates with a network via its RJ45 connection using CAT5E or CAT6 Ethernet cable. It does not communicate via Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or AirPlay 2. The USB connector can be used to connect to a local library such as a USB stick though long-term use is not recommended due to limited life of a USB stick. This port can also be used for a manual upgrade of the firmware should the internet via the network be not available. Digital output is available via the coax or optical out connector. The balance line in mic in connector can be used to connect to an analog device or microphone preamp. 
The connector mates are included in the accessory bag of the B100S. Please make sure to be on the lookout for these when first unboxing the product. The unit provides a balanced connection point for the subwoofer out. The settings for the subwoofer is accessible from the audio settings of the app. Turn subwoofer on and view and adjust crossover point accordingly. The reset button is used in conjunction with the factory reset procedure described in the next slide. A small pointed device must be used to activate the internal switch. The lower connector here allows for an external IR receiver to be connected and a trigger in 12 volt signal can be connected. The trigger is only active if the on off switch is turned on. The balance line out connector provides the analog out signal to your amplification system. To help match line or mic in, the dip switch settings should be set to match the input device used. Also, a phantom power supply can be turned on if a microphone requiring that power source is directly connected to the mic in. It should remain off for all other uses. The B100S is an AC mains power device and the power cable should be connected here. As displayed on this slide, the factory reset procedure is outlined here. A copy from the user guide found on the B100S webpage. This should be used when all other remedies are exhausted. We always suggest a simple reboot, remove power, reapply power, before using this step. Many times a reboot will assist in discovery of the player, as an example. On this slide, I thought I would share some real-world instances where some users have had issues and I wanted to share some remedies with you. Some users have seen instances when the red status light on the front of the unit briefly comes on at power-up goes off quickly. This can be an indication that the trigger switch on the rear panel is in the on position by mistake. Switch this to off to see if this condition is cleared. If the trigger is to be used, then the switch should be on and a 12 volt signal must be applied continuously while the player is to be in use. Believe it or not, we've had some support requests wondering why they cannot see the Wi-Fi signal from the B100S. It does not have Wi-Fi and must connect via Ethernet. If using a mobile device via Wi-Fi, make sure its connection point is on the same network subnet and this player. Many times this is not the case and if not on the same subnet, then the mobile device will not discover the player. The RM100 is a rack mount system allowing up to three B100S units to be mounted in a 19 inch 1U rack space. The B100S units are mounted from the front and secured with a screw that is included with the B100S. Two blanking panels are included with the RM100 and are easily removed due to the use of magnetic tabs when additional units are added. Basic use of the B100S is that once connected to a network, it can be used as a player for music streams, outputting to line out, and then connected to an external amplifier speaker system. This is common in retrofit situations when replacing a previous source component. Also, other sources can be connected and controlled via the line in mic input and output the same way. For those applications where Bluetooth Chromecast or HDMI eARC input from a TV can be made available, then the NAD CS1 and Blue Sound Hub accessories can be added to provide the necessary input as shown. The Blue Sound Hub, for example, allows the HDMI eARC audio input from a TV to be accessed on the BlueOS network as an available source that can be selected by any BlueOS based player speaker on the same network. More on that is covered in the CS1 and Blue Sound Hub technical webinar. Thank you for taking the time to review this presentation. The Blue Sound professional team wishes you all the best as you use your B100S network player.